Hi, Paulie here. So I want to talk about one of the true classics of the genre. This is a comedy game. It's a game that's absolutely withstood the test of time and has gotten better and better with each re-release. Paranoia. This is the 2016 version and it's great. You can see it comes in a box. It's, um, it's pretty compact. It's a cornucopia of fun. So Paranoia was originally kind of done pretty much as a game that you could use as something to take a break from long campaigns of mighty heroic doings and deeds. You could play this completely crazy, paranoid, shrieking bit of fun. It's, but it, it actually works well as a campaign. Um, I've played many campaigns of it. It actually works beautifully as a convention game because you can set it up pretty quickly and you can just run these absolute screamingly hilarious things. So, first off, you all get one tra traitor point for even listening to this entire thing. Um, the premise. The premise is that some kind of disaster gripped the world. Nuclear war, whatever, and a section at least of humanity, or in fact the entire human race as far as you know, have gone down into this um, area called Alpha Complex, which is this mighty series of you know, bunkers and um, habitats. And here, Humanity is looked after by the computer. Who is your friend? The computer is your friend. Of course it is. That's the first thing you see in the books. Um, this computer is looking after humanity. Uh, it is your friend. It cares for you. Well, it cares for humanity. Well, it's been programmed to sound like it cares for humanity. But it is your friend, and if you don't believe that, you get a trader point. Um, so, yes, it cares for humanity, but individuals often get lost between the cracks. This is a game of crazed bureaucracy of inter-party treachery, of dobbing each other in for points, of point scoring, of crazy computer logic trying to, you're trying to sort of deal with this ridiculous dystopian uh, and often utterly hilarious environment. So, the citizens of our complex, um, you're, you can be male, you can be female, you can be intersex, you can be any gender you want. The only thing that's actually forbidden is for um, male and females to have sex together because that's chaotic. Uh, all these people are clones. They come from clone banks. So the standard setup of this game um, has you guys starting off somewhere down in the lower ranks. Everyone has a color-coded um, security clearance. Starts at infrared down the bottom which is represented by black. Red, orange, yellow, green and it's rumored up at the high point there are the violets and the ultraviolets who actually communicate directly with the computer. Praise be to the computer. Um, but no one's ever really seen one. The classic start is that you are all troubleshooters. You are red clearance people. So the infrareds are the workers. So they kind of run the algae vats. Uh, they clean the corridors. Um, they do drudgery level things. They pack the shelves and they all eat foods that are filled with drugs that keep them kind of sedated and really happy. Just just kind of like they'll tend to just agree with each other and just get on because the drugs tell them to. And um, you guys, however, read this is a level where you've got some um, you've got some decision making that you can do. And um, instead of having to sleep in giant barracks with thousands and thousands of people, oh, you get a room. You know, you get to you get to share a room, <laughs> a group of six if you get a room. So you are all troubleshooters, and as problems arise, you are brought in, and you are given an assignment and off you go to do it. Sounds simple, doesn't it? So, reeling this back, when you open this box, damn fine box, you get a cornucopia of fun. So there are, there are three books in here. So there's a, a player's manual, player's manual, which tells the players what they need to know. Umpire's manual, <laughs> which tells an umpire what he needs to know. And a uh, little book of scenarios. Have a nice day or else. Right. You also get some cards, you get some cool dice, um, you get some um, character sheets which are all, these are um, um, stiff card and you can write on these with um, China Graph pencils or erasable marker and so on, so okay you can dish those out which is great. And a whole mess of different forms. These are works of genius by the way, more on those later. So starting off. We've got our um, player's book. This player's book, it lays out the rules that you need to operate as a character. And this is where the genius of the game starts. 
Um, there's no fellowship fostered in this thing at all. So you've got a slew of different skills and you've got characteristics, obviously. When you're designing a character, the first thing you do is you write out three adjectives that sort of describe your character. My character is intelligent, beautiful, and uh, all courageous, you decide. Dun, 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 dun. Now what you do is the umpire nominates one of you. He either just takes a person to their left or he picks someone through the greater wisdom that is granted to him as, you know, playing the computer. This person picks one of their skills. Skills are given a number between like one and four. And this first person picks one skill and they say, I have that at plus one. And then the person to their left is given the exact same skill at negative one. Um, hey, you bastard. So this person might have taken, oh, well, quick, I want to snatch up combat skills. I'm going to take the combat things. So this guy's now cursed with this lower skill. That person who's been given the negative skill, he now or she now picks a, um, a skill. And they get that at plus two, and the person next to them gets it at negative two. They then pick one at plus three, and it, this goes round and round and round and round until all of the um, skills have been chosen. There are simpler ways of doing it. They've got, you know, just pick and choose, but this is the way they recommend because now you've all basically wished these horrible skills on each other. The next thing you do is you sort out your characteristics. Now, the number of skill points that you've got, it's a little thing that totals up, it'll give you some numbers between, you know, zero and four again, and they get assigned to different characteristics. But the thing is, that goes to the person on your left, who you've just probably pissed off by screwing them over about these skills, and they assign the numbers to your characteristics. <laughs> so if you've stolen all the good combat skills, they might make sure that your combat-based characteristics are low, because they're going to show you a thing or two. So. <laughs> That doesn't make the party work any better, but boy, you sure showed them a thing or two. And the last thing is, that person on your left can now flip one of the character descriptors that you chose. You know, I want to be intelligent, beautiful, and brave. No, no, this guy can flip that so that, no, brave's going to be cowardly. <laughs> you are a complete coward. You can attempt to bribe them not to do that. You can offer them character equipment. You can offer them some of these moxie points. That there are things that your character has. You can even offer it powers and so on. And so I'll give you this if you just don't do that. So, um, close party cooperation and courage from word go. You are given lots of hard numbers. How This is how the system works. This is how armor works. This is how weapons work. And there is a currency of experience points. You will gain experience through missions, and you can spend those to improve characteristics, skills, get better equipment, get better living quarters. You can save them up. You can purchase higher security clearance for yourself. So it's experience points that you went through adventures, or it asks you to refer to them as XP points, just to piss everyone off, because that's what the designers are like. Um, so you're all set up. Off you go. Now, you get these. It's a dice pool system. So you're adding skill, characteristic, and you're rolling, and you're looking for fives and sixes, and so on. But with each roll, you roll a computer dice, and this has a little computer, computer is watching you icon. Whenever that comes up when you are rolling your skill, the computer comes in in some way. So if you failed, the computer is somehow responsible for it, or chimes in. So um, their example is you're desperately trying to defuse a bomb, and says, well, the character rolls a dice and does a fail, but he does roll the computer dice. So the armor decides as you're trying to defuse this thing, your visual cortex, you have a, a computer cortex, so the computer can constantly see what you see, hear what you do, and everyone gets projection from this thing. It's helpfully projected a schematic on how to um, disarm a bomb in the middle of your vision as you're desperately trying to do it. Boom, off you go. Now, um, you have this cortex, so it helps you. It can show you arrows for where to go, and it um, flashes up warnings if you're looking at someone that's listed down as a traitor and um, it uh, highlights targets for you and all this sort of thing but the computer is watching you. Um, now there are dead spots where the, the Wi-Fi doesn't reach but you are actually warned to keep away from them because the thing about this game is that you have many clones of yourself. Everyone starts off with six clones and you can lose characters left, right and centre because what happens the moment that you die whee! A new clone comes in. It's immediately delivered in some absurd way. It comes out of a vacuum tube. It's delivered by a, um, a package delivery bot. Uh, a 3D printer suddenly spits this thing out. Um, any way it can be delivered that's funny, it just comes straight in. It's absolved of any crimes or anything that it might have done. It also has a dose of no takes his, no hits his back and all, which means it has no desire to um, destroy any other player characters that were responsible for its demise. 
and it just leaps in there and keeps playing. You can purchase more clones, uh, apparently, with, with XP, but if you're in a dead zone, then you're not being recorded. So, not only do you not get XP while you are in dead zones for any actions that you do, but also if you die, your clone doesn't have any XP that you, you earned, you just go back to what you were previously. So, you are warned, citizen, you know, don't go into these dead zones, report dead zones. So, the fun of this is that there's a whole layer of below the table communication that goes with the above table communication. So from the very start we've seen you've been fostered to do this competition with each other. Amongst these cards there are the party jobs. These show, you get a job and the job tells you what your responsibilities and what your powers are. You could be the team leader, you could be the one responsible for weapons, you could be the morale officer, um, you could be the um, um, secret service one that's particularly there to root out mutant commie traders. So everyone gets a job and of course, oh, I'm the weapons officer. You have the opportunity to therefore, you know, inspect people's weapons and probably sabotage them. On the other hand, if the weapons don't work, then you could be um, responsible. But on the other hand, you could desperately shift blame onto the person who was using it and say he wasn't using it properly. This is how the game works. You also get dealt out cards which have secret societies on them. Now, there are lots of societies in the in Alpha Complex, and some of them are, you know, completely above board. There's a Teela O'Malley fan club. She is the popular pop singer, and also, you know, she does a, a, a couple of shows and everything. Everyone loves her. In fact, only a trader would not love her. You do love her, don't you, citizen? Well, then I guess you're in the club. Oh, you bet you're in the club. Um, but there are secret societies. Now, some of these are mutant societies that want mutants to take over. Or, you know, there's, there's the commies who want to take everything over. There's uh, a group of capitalists that want to establish their own underground economy and so on. You're all dealt the card of secret societies. And you're told not all of these cards have a secret society on them, but everyone gets one. So you don't know who is in one and who isn't. These guys have contacts and so on, and often the secret societies are giving you special missions. However, only traders belong to secret societies, so if you find out someone else is in one and can prove it, that person gets trader points and will be watched and on watch lists and all this sort of thing. You also get dealt cards for mutant powers, because all these clones of clones of clones of clones of clones have started putting all kinds of strange, crazy um, mental powers in there. Again, you're told that not all of these things have a power, but everyone gets a card. Now, if you have a mutant power, you can declare it, um, because... Um, now, mutants are kind of weird and might do stuff, so you do get kind of a little trader point immediately for saying that you are a mutant. But if you are a mutant and have been hiding it, then that's only for nefarious purposes. So if you haven't declared it and it's discovered, then you get a whole bunch of trader points. Anytime you get up to five trader points, <laughs> the trees and star go to five and then your, your clone is destroyed. You know, everyone has to shoot you. They send a squad out to get you. Uh, they put a all citizens could um, must track this guy down and kill him sort of reward. Um, yeah, you're toast, and a new one comes in. Um, and on other top secret levels, there are also uh, essentially uh, things called Daves, um, which are uh, viruses and so on, which the computer completely denies they exist. Um, if you mention it, you get uh, treason points and so on. And that gets even worse. If you even mention, if you can dub, dub someone in for Daves, but the computer's so keen to get rid of them, he might kill the whole party, <laughs> because clearly it might all have been infected. So... <laughs> Just, right, so you're in the briefing room, but we're in a corridor. No, no, you're in the briefing room, but we're in Sector 221. So, there is no Sector 221. Not anymore. <laughs> Claiming knowledge of a, of a sector that doesn't exist is treason. You'll get a treason point. What? Yeah, so, so it's just arbitrary crazy. So, these games have a, a meta structure. You'll be given a briefing where you can request equipment and so on, and you'll be offered a number of experience points for the job. There'll also be some side bits where if you're in a secret society, face it, you're in a secret society, you will be given some special stuff from the secret society to do. Research and development will give you the opportunity to buy in and test some weapons, and if you bring that back, you'll get a ton of experience points for it. Fantastic! Um, but these are, of course, often ridiculous, so we were playing one game where someone goes in, we'll go down to the development, and this guy says, well, you're trying to infiltrate these ninja society, but we have developed a shuriken, which has a monofilament blade around it, uh, which can cut through anything. It also heat seeks onto targets, um, so it automatically homes. But unfortunately, it's experimental, it's expensive. We've only got one, so only one of you can take it. So the party, me, me, no, me, 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 me. All right, someone finally gets the right to have it, so he signs off and says, "Right, 
guys in white coats go at the back and they come back with <laughs> this shuriken that's the size of a tractor tire. It's like, okay, you turn it on like this, uh, give it a minute to warm up and it'll self home. So this guy's got to now go through this adventure trundling this horrible thing. When there's a big fight and these guys are behind a barricade, he's hiding around a corner. Right, right, I'll start it up. So coyote style. <laughs> Off goes this thing and you carves through the barricade, misses everybody, and just goes through a wall and disappears. And for the rest of the adventure, as you're doing stuff, you're suddenly ah, everyone has to scatter and this thing goes plowing through the scene. So uh, yes, R&D has a lot uh, in common with the Acme Corporation. And um, of course, if you lose the equipment or break it, you can be blamed for this because only traders would lose their equipment. So that's the player end. At the end of a game, or at the end of an adventure, you have debriefing, and that's where notes are compared, and you might gain all the trees and points, and people might blow up, and people get given XP rewards, and so on. So, uh, it's kind of hard to walk out of these missions without losing a couple of clones. Um, and uh, who cares? It was just designed to be you know, fun and silly. There are other things to set you off against each other, by the way. You can get awarded number one um, troubleshooter, which is a card on a stand. And when you get it, you pack, you get virtual confetti everywhere. Yay, you've done something heroic. You took the shot, you did the dive and roll, whatever. Yay, you get this thing. And a bunch of experience points come with it. Now when people come up to you, we're like, oh, we don't want to talk to the party leader. We want to talk to the number one troubleshooter. And, um, <laughs> but, and he'll get, he'll get stuff and he'll get gifts and he'll get given cake. And, but the thing is the next guy who does something great he then gets it, so it's like, this is taken off you. Oh, we're taking those experience points and we're giving it to the real number one troubleshooter. So people start falling over themselves to get it. So this is the player experience. Now you go on to the umpire experience because on the computer, that's why you're playing the computer. Now, there's a lot of background here, which I'm not gonna ruin for everyone um, pointing out, but it tells you what's going on, what the complex is, what the computer is, how it works and everything. But it has these genius level instructions on how to keep the comedy and how to keep the fun going and the secret that i'm going to give away here is that the numbers that the players are obsessed with mean almost nothing you can just screw with them as you wish um you can flip them around it really comes down to what's going to be interesting as these guys fail or succeed they guide the story and the actual device that you're given here it starts off and says you're the umpire rule one you don't roll any dice and so, but I like rolling dice. That's nice, but it's not about you. Only the players roll dice. It's about them, it's about their engagement and their fun. So their successes and their failures drive the story. You don't roll. You don't even really roll for the bad guys. When they're in combat, they roll to see how well they do in combat, and if they screw it up, then they get hurt. But it's, you don't roll adversarially against them. But, but I have lots of colored dice. That's nice, dear, but you still don't get to roll dice. Unless, as a great ruse, you want to do something or show someone that someone's dangerous, then grab some dice. Oh, five dice, that's a great number. Or oh, hang on, there's uh, this person that's attacking you is a, is a commie mutant traitor and he's really pretty commie and really pretty traitorous. Oh, give a few extra dice, roll those, just to make these people sort of paranoid that there's some sort of system working against them. Uh, it sort of isn't, the world's kind of working against them. You're not trying to arbitrarily smash people, you're not trying to arbitrarily smack people down, but you are trying to make it funny and you don't have to worry about the fact that they're killed all the time because there's this clone that comes back so it's very kind of itchy and scratchy level uh crazy in here and this goes to things like it'll give you advice armor players love armor they love armor oh it's like a religion to them this is where we're going to screw with them they've been told in the rules that armor works this way here are all the ways that armor could work and some of these are obviously stuff they figured out in um, play testing as alternative systems so when they start, oh, well, my armor is, no, 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 no. You, you explain to them, no, no, the armor works this way. As long as you're consistent for this scenario, this is how armor is working for this scenario. But you can change it the next time around, or the armor might mean nothing. That big number on the armor, oh, that's just a number on it to make you feel good. This stuff stops nothing. And the armor, in many ways, is almost meaningless. Because, say, this thing is designed, it stops, it stops lasers and it stops this, yes, but... The umpire could hit you with a sonic weapon, or he could hit you with your know, brilliant light, or you get hit by the amazing inside out gun. The armor's now on the inside and you're on the outside. Bleah! Um just crazy. So it's got all of the very, very simple rules for doing NPCs and so on, because in a way they just they are literally put in a supporting cast. So these guys just do things to keep you going. There's some great stuff here on 
the XP points. They insist that you call them XP points because that drives people mad. <laughs> Which is, this is just where they're coming from. So they're there to reward the behavior that you want to see in the game. So as you give them out, it encourages behavior. So if you're exposing traders, if you're doing this kind of crazy stuff, they get points, points, points. And you can spend those to, to muscle up the character and they're saying, let them do it. Um, let them get the equipment and let them just have it speed delivered right there in the middle of the thing. Or they get a skill soft that suddenly downloads more skills into their head so now they're better. Let them do it. Players love that and it's all about kind of engaging them. It's because it doesn't matter because they could be, you know, <laughs> they could be quintessized Arnold Schwarzenegger hyper killbot and <laughs> they can still screw up, be a traitor and be exploded. So, um, uh, it really doesn't matter. Um, but you just keep this thing going and there is a layer of underground communication that goes on they encourage you to use we used to use in written notes but people can really kind of see you doing it they encourage you to use phone messaging or you know, computer messaging to keep a series of communications going with the umpire as you're dobbing people in for things as you suspect that that other player character is actually a mutant or a traitor we were playing one wonderful game once where um there we had a see-through door and there's an orange corridor on the other side and we had to get through it so oh there's no cameras oddly enough but there is a we can speak to the computer so um we speak to the computer oh computer said so, oh we want permission to go through corridor what is that corridor 12 please and so, oh, citizen that is an orange corridor what is your security clearance sir? or we're red i'm sorry but you can only go down corridors of your own um color or lower this is for orange people and higher so therefore you can't go through it we're sorry for this inconvenience have a great day citizens damn um uh, this guy norton chimes in oh wait but but it can't see i mean it asked it doesn't know what we are so i mean we've got to get through there let's just phone it again and just tell it oh yeah yeah we're orange so we're in the lie to our friend the computer everyone's noting this down <laughs> character look, oh, guy looks around in panic like, oh, oh oh come on you're not going to report me for that are you oh <gasps> not report a crime to the computer <laughs> oh look come on. look i found those question weapons I'll, I'll give everyone a weapon if you don't report this attempting to bribe <laughs> the computer. I, 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 oh, i'm blowing myself up with a grenade that's it <laughs> so on this nonsense goes it's a fast funny frenetic game it's absolute brilliance it comes with um <laughs> a set of scenarios simple great scenarios have a nice day or else um and there's some wonderful things in here that work off the crazy computer logic that you've got to battle your way past um you know someone's repainted a corridor the wrong color we have to go through the corridor it's listed as this yes but it's the wrong color well then that's a mistake the computer doesn't make mistakes I, oh, I should, uh, there's some other cool stuff in this. All these forms, so these are forms for requisitioning equipment. These are also forms for dobbing people in for their evil commie traitorness. And there are hidden traps in these. So you'll start filling out, oh, I'm going, I know you're an evil, but right. Oh, here's the form. It says, right, describe, uh, which character are you accusing? I'm accusing this guy. You're accusing him of treason. Please describe the treasonous acts that this person has um, committed this one are there any other treasonous acts that you've personally been present witnessing this guy um doing oh yes there's two can you list all the other people um that have been there at these times and witnessed these treasonous acts along with you oh yes yeah <laughs> oh yeah oh, are you and you yeah okay you're good please make a list of all the other um <laughs> traitors and people involved with treason that you regularly spend your time with like uh-oh <laughs> you start to dob yourself in so it's it's this wonderful game that just leads you into craziness there's a huge heap of online um adventures and resources and crazy forms and things that you can download for this every single adventure of all the old previous versions can just be seized and used for this and there's a there's a wealth of this wacky crazy stuff that you can just use because it's a simple system and you can just grab it and use it um the xps they're wonderful you can actually take them away from people as you're doing it and the idea is you're offered 2000 experience points to do this job yes but as you screw up and as you don't do things and as you do collateral damage it's taken away from you you're being charged 500 points for blowing up that entire um, um, recreational area well you blew up the warbot but the warbot was crazy and stopping us going through no no the warbots are the computer's friends so you're charged 500 experience points for that um it's frenetic it's fun it's absolutely hilarious i was actually um i was laughing so hard as i read these books um 
just the descriptions and the little helpful comments from the computer all the way through it. Yeah, I was actually crying with laughter as I was, I was reading these things. So absolutely wonderful. And the utter sinister genius of the hidden game system beyond the game system that the players are told they're actually playing and so it's just wonderful and there's a whole layer of stuff that's going on that the players do not know. Look, if you used to play this in the past, the game is still going strong and it got better. The new edition is, you can see, it's very compact. All the information's there. I think it's been done a lot better and far. it's a far clearer game than it used to be. So it's actually improved. If you have never played Paranoia, for God's sakes, go out and do it. Get the box set. It's a work of genius. Your playing group will just love you for it. Uh, it's, it's wonderful, silly, crazy fun and you will have adventures that you will yak on about for years to come. Um, this is a work of comedic genius which has withstood the time and it's improved itself with every single iteration. Go out, get hold of a copy and just enjoy the sheer craziness that is paranoia, okay? Cheers!